This is the best way to change the colors in your background, or you can even with this technique, put in an image. So in this video, I'll show you exactly how you can put backgrounds in your renders really quickly and easily using the compositor. So I'm in Blender 4.5 and I'm in the layout workspace. I've got two windows just so you can see what's going on on this side and the render view in this side. I've got my nice cartoony Porsche 911 model that I'm working on. Incidentally, this is a hard surface modeling course, which will be coming out soon, where I'll go through making this exact model. And the first thing we need to be aware of when we want to change the color of the background is to make the render transparent so that we can add a background in afterwards. In order to do that, we go to the render properties up here. So I'll click on that, scroll down until we get to the film section. And I need to make sure that transparency is ticked. If I turn that off, you can see my HDRI in the background and turn it on, it's transparent. But what you will notice is that this plane that I've got selected here isn't showing up, but you can see the effects of the shadow of the car, they are showing up. That's because I've added a special property to my plane. This is only available in cycles, this shadow catcher, but you can still do the background stuff, which I'll talk about in a moment. So if I delete this plane and I'll re-add it so you can see what I'm doing. So Shift A to add, mesh and then plane, scale it up a bit. I'll just go to top view and move it into position. So somewhere around there, and then I need to go across to the object properties just here. Under visibility, click on the drop down and turn on shadow catcher. Now we can just see the shadow. The important thing to remember with this is that the color of this plane does affect the color of the car. So you might need to go across to the shading workspace. I'll just turn on rendered view so we can see the rendered results. I'll change my shader editor to object. And with the ground selected, I'll give it a new material and I'll just bring this down in terms of the color to something that's a bit more gray. So the reflections aren't affecting the underside of the car. It looks a bit strange when it's white as it goes all bright. So bringing it back down to gray makes a bit more sense. Okay, so how do we add a background? They might think in the shader editor that I go across to the world tab and then perhaps set up something in here. And you can do that, yes. So currently I've just got my HDRI hooked up to the background. So if I turn that off, you can see the difference that makes and then plug it in. You can see I've got a nice background affecting all the reflections of my vehicle. And you can have a relatively elaborate node system in here to set up the background render. It's just a bit more awkward than the way I'm going to show you. If we go across to the compositing workspace, it's a bit easier. Now, the first thing to note when you're in the compositing workspace is that you need to actually render your image before you can do anything to it in the compositor. So I'll press F12 to render and there's my vehicle it's got the shadows because of the shadow catcher on the plane at the bottom and it's got transparency in the background because my render settings under the film tab is set to transparent so once that's all set up I can actually close this down and I'll bring out a new window and I'll change this to the image editor and under the drop down, I'll change this to rendered results so we see the render result over here now in our compositor so that's the compositor just here. I'll press N to get rid of the side panel and I'll click on use nodes. Now, when you click on use nodes, you should see something like this. It's very similar to the shader editor. We've got our render layer here that's going to the composite output here, which we can see just here. So any changes I make in the middle here, for example, will affect our final output. You'll notice we've got an alpha channel just here, and that's all important for the transparency. Now the node we need to use is called the alpha over node. So if I press Shift A to add and just start typing in alpha, you can see the alpha over just there. The way to remember this is that it's all to do with the alpha channel and the transparency. That's what we're changing. Now the alpha goes into the factor and you can remember that by the gray to the gray. And that is now affecting which of these two will be shown. So I need to bring the image into the top one. And now when I plug this image into the output or the composite, we'll see what that does. And you can see instantly that I've plugged this into the wrong one. So I'll plug it into this one and that makes more sense. So what it's done is it's taken the alpha and it's given it a white. So the top one is all important for the color we want. And I can click on this. And if I change this to blue, we've now got a blue background and I can have lots of fun editing which color I want in the background. And that yellowy orange looks really nice against the blue. But you can take this further. You can actually plug an image into here as well. So I'll just zoom out a bit. I just press Shift A to add and type in image and there's input image. Bring that to the side here. I'll just bring that out a bit so we can see the whole node and I'll bring it down just a touch because when I bring in an image, you'll see the actual image above here. So I'll do that now. I'll open up an image. This background one will do nicely. Bring that in there. And then I'll plug this image into the top panel here. And there we have the image in the background, which looks quite nice. The only slight problem is if you've got an image that isn't perfectly the right size, in this case, 
1920 by 1080. We might need to do a bit of scaling. So we can bring this over to the side here, shift A to add, and just type in scale. And there's a transform scale just there. Plug that in and it's the Y that I'll need to increase. And I can just boost it there and scale it up. So that's how we can either unplug this and change the color or plug it in and use an image. So just remember we use the alpha over node and the key is that the top image here is the background and whatever you plug in will become the background. One last really important thing to be aware of, if I bring the size of this down, let's say to 0 0.05, you can see that my image is absolutely tiny in the middle here. So this is actually affecting the size of our output. So just be aware if you've got a tiny image, you will need to use this scale node here. I'll change that back to one and the Y up. You will need to use that scale node in order to see everything in the background. Hopefully that all makes sense and I hope this helps. If you like this kind of content, then do check out the links in the description to my courses and other useful videos on YouTube. You'll also find my Substack for written tutorials and even my new merch store. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.